Good evening. My name is Carolyn Black, and I'm the director of Music Emeritus at uh, Grace Church in Ossining, New York, having two campuses, one at St. Paul on the Hill on Ganung Drive, and the other one at Trinity on South Highland Avenue. And I'd like to begin tonight's compline with Sweet Hour of Prayer. It's been a rough week. this Friday evening on page 127 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us bow our heads for just a moment. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 134 on page 131. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in thy holy place and bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us, O Lord our God. Thanks be to God. And this is my favorite. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thanks be to God. Be watchful, be sober. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, 
firm in your faith. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Some of you may know that one of my favorite authors is Brian McLaren. And he has written a new book. It's called Do I Stay Christian? And it's a guide for the doubters, the disappointed, and the disillusioned. It's, uh, he's also the author of Faith After Doubt. And I would like to read you his opening notes because he's talking about Christianity and anti-Semitism. Nobody is born a religious jerk. It takes a religion to help someone become that way. Unfortunately, I know this from personal experience. I put my whole heart into parenting my four kids. They're now adults, two with kids of their own. And judging by the way our kids turned out, you would think I was an amazing dad. But last night I wrote a letter to one of our adult children to ask forgiveness for a significant flaw in my fatherhood, my approach to discipline. In the letter I explained that my approach to parenting was strongly influenced by Christian leaders whose teachings I am now repulsed by. I trusted those leaders because they were respected in the evangelical community to which I belonged, and because they used a magic word, biblical, to describe their teaching. Now I've come to see that what they called biblical was actually authoritarian, and I am coming to terms with how much better a parent I could have been if I had found better teachers. This breaks my heart, I wrote, because fatherhood has been the most meaningful experience of my life, and I sincerely wanted to do it right. I explained all this not as an excuse, but as part of my apology, because I now see how some aspects of my parenting were insensitive, unwise, and hurtful. I've told all my children I sincerely did my very best for you as a father, but you deserved so much better. If they only knew when they were born what I knew, if only I knew what I know now when they were born. In some ways, my Christian commitment probably helped me be a better parent than I would have been otherwise. But in others, I think it made me worse. The situation recalls a time Jesus spoke of religious people traveling over land and sea to make converts, only to make them twice the sons of hell they were before. Our religion can hell hellify us by inspiring in us an impenetrable sense of rightness or even superiority. The sense of rightness can inoculate us against humility, infusing in us an excessive confidence or addiction to certainty that keeps us from seeing our mistakes until after the harm has been done to others, including our children, and to ourselves. Our religion is right, we believe, which makes us right. As a result, the more devoted we are, the more stubborn and unteachable we become. And everyone can see it but us, because we're blinded by our sincerity and zeal. I'll read more next week. <laughs> right now, let us pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us all. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now I'd like to read you the names of those who have asked for special prayers and are in dire need. For Faith, Betty, Bill, Father Charles, Alicia, Kathleen, Chuck, George, Mary, Claire, Jenny, Jim, Nils, Robert, Zach, Henry and Teresa, Ginger, Bev, Terry, Todd, Stephanie, Stephen, Jenny, Mary Beth, Suzanne, Arthur, Bill, Al, Phil, Magda, Margaret, Bobby, Mike, Andreas, Tim, Sarah, Acer Jr., Cormac, Noel, Robert, Linda and Don Bibby, Terry, Michael, Yara, Debbie, Dawn, Lisa and her family, and Karen. For our essential workers, Holly, Ray, Elfreda, Jan, Alexis, Todd, Peter, Dina, Steve, Graham, Pablo, Bill, Anthony, and Nicola. And for those who have died, especially Michael Calcutty, Sarah Smallstig, and Bob Rosenblum. Hear our prayer, dear Lord, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne and illumine this night with your celestial brightness that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and of all for your love's sake. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Stay safe, my friends. Watch and your children, get your vaccines if you haven't, get your boosters if you haven't. The COVID vaccine, this new, this COVID um, new um, one is ramping up and New York is at the center of it all. Please take care of each other. Amen. <laughs>